good. And God loves you. If he never punished you when you were still in the world. Now you think he's going to punish you because you didn't preach the gospel. God never changes. Even if we change, he never changes. God is good. God is good. God is faithful. God is love. All the time. That's him. If they tell you God is punishing you. Omontinewe he loved the sinners. Bamekango Yes. If they tell you because you didn't fall. God has taken your job. yakola. Katonda yakola yakola. Bekuba kutambula ya tambula chi kati fetu tambula us who are supposed to move by reading the word of God and believe God what he has already done. Katonda ya tambula da. God has already moved in the new covenant. There is nothing like God is going to work for you. Katonda ya malada. God has already done it for you. Amen. Amen. God is not just moving. Because he has already done it. That's why Jesus is the right hand side of God. He has finished his work. If, it, if it's forgive you, he has already forgiven you. If it's deliverance, he has already delivered you. If it's healing, he has already healed you. If it's to give you wealth, he has already given you wealth. It's you to move and pray in fasting, reading the word of God, to know God and what he has done for you. Believe it and take it. When you get it, then we say God is walking in my house. But he's already walked. Let me ask you this question. You think God died for you the day you believed him? You think God died for you the day you believed him? The day you confessed Christ, you think that's when he died? Or when you repented, that's when you think that's when he forgave you? He had already shed his blood for your sin. Amen. Amen. The day you got to know it and believe, and you took your forgiveness. Amen. Amen. It's like someone with their money on the account. When they want to buy a car, they go and withdraw their money. That's how you do it with us. If you want healing, he has finished it. You want deliverance, he has already done it. You want to be forgiven, he has done it. You want everlasting life, he has already done it. He has already done and finished his work. He has already done and finished his work. Yes, through his Christ. son, Jesus Christ. Yes, That's why Jesus said, It's finished. We don't, we are not demanding anything from God now. The things that you're waiting upon God, He's the one waiting for you. His work was finished. Pick your Bible. Pray. 
If you go somewhere, start by thanking him. Say, God, what I'm learning today. You already finished my healing. My delivery is already finished. Whatever I want, you finished it. Now I come for you to teach me how I get what you've already finished. No pastor or any person. No prophet who's going to give you anything better than what God has already done. Even if you go to Nigeria and get a lot of anointing oil, and you go to Israel and pick a lot of anointing oil, and you go to a prophet and gives you a handkerchief with his image. No one is going to give you better than what God has finished. All that they give you, they are diverting you from what Jesus has finished for you. A good pastor, a good teacher, a good preacher should focus you to Jesus and the work he finished. It's like he gets the bulb and put it in the wrong place. And in that red place and you switch on it. When he brings your soul and you stop fearing and you stop doubting She'll only pray for you for one minute. He will start to see what you've been praying for. The best work is to align you. Just believe. You believe what God has already done through our Lord Jesus. He's not going to move now. He already moved once through Christ Jesus. He came to us so that he can put us right. We need to walk to seek to know God to seek to know what God has already finished for us we believe it we thank God for it and it's manifested in our lives these two things will become a hindrance that fails you to see what you have that is in your life. The things we've been reading about. Number one. That every time. Seeing yourself as a sinner. Passion Bible is at three stages of spiritual maturity. The first stage. Your sins have been permanently removed. Because of the power of his name. Your sins have been permanently removed because of the power of his name. Yes. Jesus died for the sins of the world forever and ever. Those that were done, those that are being done, and those that will ever be done permanently. One sacrifice. Why we 
fail to see what God has finished in our lives is to see that every time you are a sinner you see the sins of your parents are troubling you the sins of your ancestors sin conscious hope we are together every time you think you are not worthy you cannot pray and thank God for what you prayed for. You need to find a pastor to pray for you. And again, you don't believe it. You go to another one also to pray with you. And still, you don't believe it. And you seek for intercessors. And they also pray about, about it you think that the more you collect many prayer warriors you'll convince God to do it for you if you're praying Get to know it that you are not you don't pray to convince God. Jesus has already convinced God. You don't convince God to work for you. It's not like in the court that you have to convince the judge. Or you're in business, you want to convince your customer. Some people hide. See what God. Uh, uh. No. That will not convince God to work for you. It means Jesus wasted his time. It makes the cross to be in vain. What will convince God? And what has already convinced God. And what will keep on convincing him is the sacrifice of his son Jesus. We are being accepted because of him. We pray in his name because of him. If you believe that God forgave you, you go to his throne with with courage knowing that nothing will hinder God to hear your prayer nothing will stop God from answering back to you Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 after talking about Christ to be our sacrifice and the time he said that we should go to the throne of mercy knowing that there's grace and mercy to whoever is in need. Think if God will look at what we've done or what we have not done then no one can go before God no one can go before the throne of God but he accepts you because of the work Christ did how many of you understand that now Stop remembering the sins of your ancestors. She's there. When you do that, you're despising the cross that Jesus took because of our sins. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. That they have no condemnation. No condemnation to those who accept Jesus. Those who are in Christ Jesus. That all our condemnation, the condemnation of the believers, every case against a believer. God has put it on his son. You would have rose your hands and worship him. 
He has put it on his son. We had lost the case. But the price of our sin. He put it on his son. May God rebuke Satan. People want to point you to your sins. And they don't point you to Jesus. What will change a sinner? Not to show them their sin. What changes a sinner? Yes. is to show them Christ. If you are doing a job and they pay you 50,000 Uganda shillings and someone shows you a better job with 50 million Uganda shillings he doesn't need to beg you to leave this job. You just dump this one you might not even alert them. They will look for you and you don't come anymore. And they don't see you. And now you've run to a better job. If everyone gets to know the goodness and the power and the love and the friendship that is in Jesus Christ he finds himself when he's out of sin without struggle the more you tell him about their sin the more you tell him about their sin even some lose hope. And they just say, ah, because they think God doesn't love them anymore. You, you're so holy. For them, they are sinners. If it's sinning, ah, let me sin. But the more you tell them about Jesus and show them their goodness and they see their greatness and they see his mercy and they see his love and they see what brought Jesus it will arrest their soul that even if they slip into sin they know where to run to that Jesus still loves me he will help me I ask you number one look at Jesus don't look at yourself number two let us point people to Jesus when you go out in the world we tell people that he loved the world and gave in his son whoever believes him and people believe now when they come in church and then we start to condemn them and they feel guilty so Step number one. You were permanently, permanently, forever forgiven. Forever forgiven. Gamba, I am forever forgiven. Gamba, na sonyi we mirembe jona. Forever forgiven. Mirembe jona di musonyi we. Katia chichi gamba gendo tamburi demu chivi. Does that send you to go and sin? Sin will always be sin. And it's the way of Satan. If you walk in sin, Satan will do something and say, You see, God has done it to you. But it's you who decided to commune with Satan instead of communing with God. God forgave you. But if you're walking in sin, you're giving Satan a chance, an opportunity to, to hurt you and then lie to you that God has punished you. Say, I'm forgiven. I'm not a slave of sin. I'm a son of God. Number two, 
I want to conclude. Number two. Nagamba no mubi muamuangula. You already overcame the evil one. Jesus did all this on the cross. For us. The sacrifice paid by Jesus on the cross. He gave it for you and me. He paid for the sin. So that you don't go to hell. Adam, when Adam sinned, there was world sin. And Jesus, when he died on the cross, whoever believed him, we, had, we died with him. Another job that Jesus did on the cross, he took away from Satan the authority, the power. The old authority that he had over this world, taking it from him because of you and me. We don't overcome Satan because we tell him we break, we stomp over him. We stand in the victory that Jesus won for us. And we command him that you stomped over you. Even if you don't shout. Sometimes people don't understand me. They come, I pray for them, I say, Pastor, only that can pray. It's a prayer like Because I know you have the victory. When you go to withdraw your money, you don't shout, I want my money. You go knowing that you have to. It's your money. You go to your ATM. You don't shake the machine. If it fails to do, you find another machine. You find another machine. You will know I have not got the money, but the money is there. Tomorrow you go back. But you don't need. Shout. If the Spirit of God is commanding to shout, you may shout. But shouting will not give you victory. Victory yes, comes from Jesus. Sometimes I shout. Especially in conference, conference, after prayer, I feel the victory I have. Shout of victory. In the first session, as I open the conference, we shout. See? Not to open the sky. We shout for the victory that we have. We start in victory and we end in victory. The victory of Christ. It's your victory. Amen. Amen. Kati, Yokana wandikidavan to bad. John is writing to these people that you overcame the evil one. You overcame sin. You overcame the evil one. Katinova. And then your soul must think because it sees, because it speaks about Christ. That's what we call Christ consciousness.